So thank you very much, Ilona. Really sorry for the technical details. So uh, for the students here, uh, Ilona uh, shall have come here and she had a problem to fix at a, a university. So she told me that she, she would not be able to come, but we decided to keep this uh, seminar uh, online today. Uh, I hope that uh, all the technical issues will be fixed also for the discussant and for you to speak in, a, uh, very, uh, in the best way possible. Uh, so Ilona, I give you the floor now so we, we don't lose more time. Sorry for that. And, and, and the discussant uh, after you, your talk. No problem. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, and thank you for inviting me. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry for not making it per person. Uh, like I had two minute teaching duties and I uh, was just uh, not possible to uh, to travel. Uh, okay, I, I start immediately my presentation. Just let me to share my, my screen and the presentation mode. Okay. okay, so I hope you can... Um, uh, there are some people in the waiting room. David, can you uh, see the message? You may can let them in. Um, yeah, I, I will deal with that. Okay, super. So I, I got this announcement. Okay, uh, so I will talk about uh, social tipping dynamics for uh, reaching a global net zero emissions system. And I'm working as a professor in societal uh, climate change impact at the University of uh, Graz, the Wegener Center for Climate and Global Change. And I'm leading here a research group uh, working on social complexity and system transformation. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so great to present my work here. So first, what, what's about and what's the challenge that um, I and my research group uh, address in our work? Um, so this, uh, those two maps, they show um, um, research results that I was involved in um, and was research that uh, we did for, for the World Bank for the Turn Down the Heat report. And in this report, we looked at the differences um, in terms of impacts uh, uh, and, um, of different climate change, change scenario at the end of the century. So the upper map shows um, climate change impacts in terms of temperature changes in a world that uh, assumes uh, limiting global warming uh, below two degrees. Uh, and the bottom map uh, shows uh, temperature changes uh, um, in a world that uh, misses this target and uh, reaches uh, four degrees uh, or more at the end uh, of the century. And this is for summer month, months. Um, and it's uh, quite uh, obvious if I would ask you, like, in which world would you prefer to um, to live? I think most of you would say that you prefer this, this upper uh, uh, world, yeah? And, and here's the temperature um, scale. Uh, so um, the two degrees or, or below two degrees world, it's not a piece of cake. It, it means like quite serious uh, adaptation challenges, but it looks kind of manageable and uh, like it looks like a, a world that uh, we can adapt to with our technology and knowledge. But if you look at this uh, map below and the uh, uh, temperature changes uh, in a world that is four degrees uh, uh, warmer at the end of the century, um, this is uh, very difficult to imagine like how uh, we can adapt to, to, to such impact. Um, and, um, and for instance, how can we maintain uh, functioning of national states in, in, in the most affected regions? Uh, and and um, to be honest, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, so uh, um, I think uh, if we get to those higher degrees of global warming, it uh, means uh, especially uh, socioeconomic impacts that uh, will be very difficult uh, to adapt. And this is just the temperature changes, but similar maps uh, can be shown on, for instance, water uh, availability, uh, droughts, uh, and um, other climate change impacts. Um, and it's not about uh, only um, climate change impacts occurring in specific uh, um, affected by climate change regions, but um, more and more we know about so-called uh, cascading climate change impacts. So these are impacts that cascade beyond uh, 
directly affected uh, geographical regions or sectors uh, through international trade network, uh, stability and conflicts, also migration and finance and business uh, networks. Um, and the question is uh, how to um, um, adapt and, um, and and yeah, also what are um, kind of the limits to 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 adaptation to to, to such a, a impact and what uh, in general they mean in terms of like maintaining uh, like basic function uh, functions of our societies. Um, and uh, the question that I ask uh, in my work is uh, how to avoid those uh, higher uh, climate um, change scenarios. Um, so uh, this figure is showing um, uh, here the historic changes in the CO2 emissions in different years um, and the future projections. Yes. So, so first, like if you uh, look at the changes uh, in the historic CO2 emissions, you see that in the um, recent um, history, uh, the CO2 emissions, they most of the time they, they increased. And if they um, decreased uh, for some time, uh, we uh, were had to deal or they decreased only in periods of um, some time of um, social um, collapse, like uh, the great or maybe not collapse, but so some some like uh, um, uh, in periods where where there were some some serious uh, crises and, and 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 wars. So, for instance, like uh, the Great Depression or World War II, the collapse of communism, or also the global uh, financial crisis, or most recently the um, Corona pandemic. Um, and if we want to reach a, a world that um, limits the uh, warming to to well be below two degrees uh, at the end of the century, so, so within the Paris uh, Agreement range, uh, we would need to get here on this uh, blue curve. So it's quite challenging, um, I have to say. And if we miss this target, so uh, the red line shows the emissions in uh, kind of business as usual scenarios with uh, a scenario with climate change impacts uh, uh, or climate change reaching uh, four degrees uh, at the end of the century. And, and there are some intermediary um, scenarios here. Yeah? Um, but if we look at this blue uh, curve, um, that would take us to uh, a world that is within the, the Paris uh, Climate Agreement range. Um, it's, uh, yeah, quite, um, quite challenging. Um, and it means um, a, a rate of uh, CO2 reduction of um, six percent and more per year so in a way it's like this uh, corona um, effect that uh, the corona pandemic had uh, on the co2 emissions uh, but year after year so every year um, uh, about six percent emissions uh, less globally and, and year after year uh, and those different uh, colors here they, they show the, the corresponding um, sectors but uh, not in a traditional way, like where you look at different um, uh, production sectors, but more kind of in terms of our agency where, where we can intervene. So uh, about 70% um, of uh, all emissions can be linked with uh, behavior and lifestyle choices. So it's basically like what we uh, consume, what kind of uh, houses or heating systems uh, we, we have, our mobility, uh, also food production. Um, then infrastructure and supply is very uh, important. Um, so um, uh, emissions from uh, public uh, buildings and so on. Um, and finally, also uh, agriculture, forestry, and uh, land use uh, is extremely important. And, and here, uh, uh, what is interesting, uh, land use uh, uh, has to uh, change like from um, emission an emission source to emission sink. Um, and it's uh, quite ch challenging because like, uh, if you think about land use um, and renewable energy production, yeah, like we will, uh, in the net zero world, we have to produce um, our energy on the earth surface. Yes, yeah? so currently we take it from below uh, the ground. Um, 
and uh, in a net zero world it has to be produced uh, you know, through renewables so mostly from uh, like on the land surface so it puts an additional uh, pressure on, on land uh, resources uh, because then you need land uh, for uh, yeah, agricultural production for uh, uh, for settlements for human settlements uh, for biodiversity conservation um, and on the top also for um, for the energy product product production so it's, it's quite challenging um, and um, at the end we also need um, technological co2 removal and what is interesting those technologies for the co2 removal uh, uh, do not really exist yet at the scale that is needed yes yeah? so so um, um, there are some developments but they, they don't exist yet uh, without technological co2 removal we won't be able to um, 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 to get to uh, or stay on on this this, this curve um so uh, yeah, there are those many challenges that uh, we, we look ahead um, and and uh, maybe what's also important it's um, what is questioning my work also is uh, how to get on this and, and stay on this uh, blue curve but without avoiding uh, human suffering here yeah? because we know that uh, um yeah with um like a crisis or or or, or maybe some um, social disruptions uh, we, we we could get it, but of course we want to avoid it. Yes, so we don't want to, uh, or kind of we want to maintain uh, human well-being. Yeah, despite those um, challenges. Um, and all, of course, all mitigation uh, pathways will be also affected by climate change impacts. That's uh, also very important. Yes, so they might um, 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 as kind of force to. Um, um, to take some uh, decisions um, and uh, it's uh, also quite um, so maybe not everyone uh, knows it that uh, so, so there's this kind of uh, um, there, there there are some kind of hoping that at you know, one day fossil fuel resources will be gone and then like we have to uh, uh, get on on um, <laughs> Uh, or we have to you know, then um, uh, now start using uh, renewables uh, massively, uh, but it's not the case. Yes, yeah? so there are still uh, quite a lot of fossil fuel resources uh, below the ground. Uh, um, so we cannot hope that they will um, that fossil fuel resources will will become um, scarce in the next years. There's still still quite a lot. Um, so recently, I, I'm, I have a project on uh, lignite coal areas in, uh, in Europe. And during our uh, field trip to uh, Germany, the Rosetia region, we, we've heard that they have enough uh, lignite, so like brown coal, for the next uh, 100 years. So uh, um, exactly. So, so uh, there is still like enough to, to dig out. And so we need some other um, instruments to 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 um yeah to change uh, our um, emissions radically um and and the scale of um of um the emission challenges yeah so um that this need to 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 reduce the emissions um six percent and more per year um it um it means like a, a scale of, 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 of changes that is uh, that are very rapid and uh, unprecedented in um, in the human um, history. Uh, so uh, if you think or if you look at different indicators, like for instance, if you um, analyze uh, changes that occurred in Europe uh, after the collapse uh, of communism in um, uh, early uh, 1990s, and you look at different indicators uh, like uh, there are changes were occurring at the rate of around 2% per year. So if you look at changes uh, like, I don't know, in employment or, um, or um, um, yeah, um, or, or, or other indicators, like you, you see changes of, at the rate of about 2% two, 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 uh, per year. Yeah, and, and this kind of like, uh, so, so um, and also most of um, um, social sciences and economics um, Actually, with this deals with this kind of notion of like gradual change. So, like the idea is that kind of like you you change step by step, 
um, and and kind of uh, uh, yeah, like like everything goes kind of in the same direction. Uh, but there are very little theories that can be uh, helpful for understanding, uh, uh, like um, yeah, rapid uh, disruptive um, changes um, um, that are actually needed to 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 get to um, to um, to those uh, lower emission scenarios. Um, however, there there is some research uh, in social social sciences that uh, that can be helpful in this context. Um, so, for instance, uh, there is research uh, on um, racial um, segregation in U.S. Uh, neighborhoods. It's actually racial research, uh, but it's from 1950s, yes, so, so we have to keep in mind that it was like, written in, in different uh, um, kind of social political contexts. But in that research, the, the, the authors observed that uh, uh, you could have observed like, uh, uh, like a tipping point in, in the segregation of neighborhoods. So if there were about 30% uh, of uh, people with other skin uh, color, uh, like the, the neighbors start to feel uncomfortable and they started to, to move out. Yeah? And, and, and this very notion of, of like a tipping point is actually comes from, from this literature. Um, so um, and it, it kind of, yeah, it became interesting or I, I became interested in this phenomenon and I started to, Look at other evidence, and actually, there's uh, uh, there are some uh, models of public opinion, like social norm formation, but also changes in financial markets that show that actually um, this kind of like a rapid um, effect can be observed. Uh, and for instance, in uh, social norm uh, formation, um, there are behavior experiments that show that um, you need uh, like of around twenty five percent. Of, my, of kind of committed minority uh, who intentionally makes uh, like chooses like a different social norm. It could be any norm, and and the the rest uh, um, will will follow. Uh, yes, so so it's it's kind of interesting that uh, that there is some evidence that um, that this kind of tipping effect, like rapid uh, uh, change, uh, um, can be um, observed in 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 some. Um, in some, um, yeah, at least social systems, and of course there, there's also research from uh, physics and um, uh, and natural systems that also shows that uh, yeah that um, like transition like to a different um, state uh, as, as possible, um, and um, it brought me to uh, proposing uh, a definition of so-called uh, social tipping elements and social tipping interventions um, that mean. Uh, um, subsystems of the whole uh, system where you can observe uh, rapid um, change um, and also like uh, interventions that can push uh, the uh, such rapid changes. And maybe uh, what is also important is that uh, by this notion of uh, social, social tipping effect, um, we mean uh, kind of like relatively a small uh, intervention uh, with a relatively big um, effect, yeah. So, for instance, in the climate change context, you could also talk about uh, geoengineering solutions, yeah. But there, like most of them, it's like a very, very huge intervention that maybe you no, know, it's even difficult to uh, to to control and manage, uh, and, and even kind of at the whole no planetary scale, uh, with a potentially very big uh, effect, yeah. But but here um, in this discussion on social tipping. Um, Elements would mean exactly like kind of relatively small uh, interventions with kind of like a big uh, systemic uh, effect. Um, and of course, you know, like uh, social tipping could occur uh, in many um, uh, in many domains. Yeah, but uh, so so like you could observe, I don't know, social tipping in uh, um, um, I don't know in 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 um, in um, Maybe in sales of some products, of course, or or some other phenomena. But here, uh, what we mean it's uh, we mean um, tipping um, elements that um, that can affect the um, evolution of the whole world Earth system. Yes, yeah? so like kind of the the, the whole uh, evolution of the whole planetary system, and of course, and also impact uh, uh, um, uh, the emissions. Um, Okay, and here this uh, picture look, looks relatively smooth, but of course, in the reality, uh, 
like we are talking about social complexities. Yes, yeah? so uh, uh, so such changes they don't look so so smooth. Yes, yeah? so there could be also kind of like ups and downs. Um, and I think it's also important to, to to keep in mind that maybe only after like some time passes, like we can really uh, tell like uh, um, or, or tell you no know, like whether you no know, the system has tipped or, or not yet. So actually, like uh, very often journalists asking this question, like has has the world earth or have we tipped yet? Like are we on the you now Paris pathway? Uh, it's very difficult to to answer yet yeah, because like in, in the moment. Um, uh, uh, where 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 you know uh, where where we currently are, it's just like very difficult to 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 assess what, what's going on. And only after um, um, a few years, yeah, or maybe even several years, we we will be able to say yes, this was like this moment where uh, the system tipped, and then like kind of everything uh, started to change very rapidly. So um, um, exactly. So 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 uh, yeah, we have to keep in mind that we deal with those social complexities, and those changes are not. Uh, smooth and and uh, and and they could kind of um like um uh, in a particular moment uh, uh, yeah uh, it's, it's very difficult to to, to assess the, the concrete situation um okay so um in any case like so so uh, we we had the definition of, of social tipping uh, dynamics and the next step uh, was uh, his so what are those social tipping elements and social tipping interventions like uh, where uh, what, what are the kind of empirical examples and evidence that um, we can talk about this uh, phenomena um, so what we uh, did in in our research we asked international experts uh, and uh, we have also done a literature review and, and an expert workshop um, and we ask uh, various experts to to tell us like what what they um, think. Uh, can we point out to some um, areas where uh, such rapid changes can be observed? And can we point out to some particular interventions that um, are pushing those changes? Uh, um, and uh, uh, what we did, we uh, we ran an international expert. Uh, survey we approach um, over 1000 international experts and um, over 100 um, uh, exactly 100 i think 32 uh, got back to us and answer our uh, or, or completed our survey and then we have also run an expert workshop and a literature review um, and what is interesting um, is that that time actually most of experts believe that uh, there are uh, uh, or, or they they were pointing out to to different um, interventions and and and, and subsystems where such uh, rapid changes uh, can be observed, and there were only a few experts that uh, believe that this is not possible that uh, we can just not get to it's not possible to to get to this uh, uh, Paris compatible um, pathway and like we have no means to do this. So, but this were clearly like a small minority of, uh, of the experts. And what is maybe a bit funny is that it was before the corona pandemic and uh, some experts at time pointed out that we need like a global pandemic and like half uh, of human population needs to uh, be killed you know to to get to the uh to the sparse compatible scenario um so so in a way uh, um yeah uh, interesting that uh, kind of experts were, were bringing such ideas like before uh, the, the corona pandemic uh, um, started, but there were just like uh, a very few experts, like maybe like I don't know, three at the end, who who brought those kind of like negative uh, ideas, like uh, pandemic wars and and things like this. But the predominant um, majority of experts, um, like suggested, those kind of like positive interventions, yeah, like uh, um, that uh, that kind of mean um, a rapid reduction of uh, CO two emissions uh, with uh, without compromising uh, human well being, and this is like what we were interested in. Yes, so we did not look at those kind of um, negative, uh, catastrophic uh, scenarios. We only looked at those kind of like positive uh, interventions. Um, okay, so this um, table provides the overview uh, of the results. Um, so overall, uh, based on the uh, expert survey, expert workshop, and literature review, 
we were able to identify uh, six um, so-called social tipping uh, or candidates for social tipping elements were uh, rapid uh, changes uh, leading to uh, CO2 uh, reductions uh, can be observed. And uh, each of them corresponded to uh, like some um, concrete interventions that, that should be implemented to, to, um, to, to, to push those rapid changes. Uh, we have also tried to identify the control parameter, like uh, search for evidence that confirms this, this rapid uh, effect on the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And we also uh, looked at like where or like in which social or at which social structure level those interventions uh, can occur. So are we talking about like market exchange or uh, or uh, urban governance or um, national policy? Or, or also social uh, norm systems. And we also looked at the time um, needed to trigger uh, tipping. So some of those changes, they can occur relatively uh, quickly and some take uh, more time, but they're also needed. I will get to this in, in a minute. So um, if you look at our list, so uh, we have here the energy uh, production and storage uh, system that uh, uh, was uh, pointed out by the experts as the most important. And kind of those interventions that um, are likely to bring those, those those rapid changes that are needed include here the changes in the subsidy programs, so providing more um, subsidies uh, to renewables and reducing uh, the subsidies that are uh, still flowing to fossil fuel uh, uh, energy, um, and then the centralized energy generation. Yes, so um, centralized energy generation is needed uh, uh, because most of the time it means like uh, uh, systems that that yeah that rely on renewables, um, um, but um, exactly they, they 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 have to be built. Um, then the next area was human settlements, um, and here building carbon neutral cities was pointed out as the intervention that can lead to rapid changes. Financial markets, the divestment movement. Um, and what is interesting, um, for instance, in the financial markets, we there, there is research showing uh, uh, that you can also um, tell there about this, uh, or you can also find this this uh, uh, minority uh, majority uh, effect. Uh, so uh, there is some um, um, research, or, or even like a kind of model that that shows that. Need about nine percent uh, investors that uh, need to uh, um, uh, like consciously um, invest uh, uh, their assets in, in or, or, or they 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 financial assets in in in, in uh, renewables to tip the uh, the financial market. Yes, so all other investors uh, would stop investing in um, in. Um, fossil uh, fuels because now they would be uh, afraid of losing their, their demand. Yes, yeah, so uh, there is some evidence showing again that like small um, minorities can, um, um, or small organized minorities can have, um, can lead to uh, changes that affect the, the whole system dynamics. Um, then the next area was the system of norms and values. Um, and here, the, the intervention that is needed is uh, recognizing the immoral character of fossil fuels. Um, so actually, this is where they're starting. Like uh, many young people, they, they feel bad about um, like um, driving a car or, or, or flying. And, and that's exactly what, what is needed. Also, like for instance, the flight shaming uh, movement here, yeah? uh, that, that you, you start to feel, feel uncomfortable um, um, that uh, you use this type of... Uh, uh, products and, and and then you know if you feel uncomfortable you you start to explore uh, other opportunities um, and 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 search for for other solutions yeah so kind of you you open up to 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 to, to other possibilities um, and again uh, here also there was this this evidence that um, exactly those kind of small uh, groups are needed to to change uh, social norm systems yeah so. Uh, but but you need this kind of like committed um, uh, minority. Um, the next type of type of intervention is the or or um, tipping element is education system. And here we talk about climate education. 
So uh, exactly like my expert believe that uh, climate education has this kind of uh, tipping effect, yet takes more time. Uh, but once you have like a new generation of uh, young adults entering the, the job market, um, or also um, not political system, then like the, the system changes very rapidly. Um, and that's uh, also our hope. And finally, uh, the information uh, feedback system. Um, and um, here the, expert were pointing, the experts were pointing out to the emission information um, disclosure. Um, so uh, the uh, problem here is that currently, you know, if you go to um, a supermarket um, or you want to you know, book holidays, uh, you, you actually have no information about the emissions of, of different um, uh, products or services, or only in, in very rare, rare cases you, you do have such information, but most of the time not. So, uh, yet experts were pointing out that uh, you need some um, labeling uh, programs uh, where the emissions will be disclosed. Um, so, in this way, you can take uh, more informed choices. But also, it could open up um, um, uh, like possibilities to, for instance, like ban uh, certain pro products, yeah, or services that are um, very polluting, yeah. So uh, if you disclose the emissions, then you could say that the product that cause uh, more emissions than another, um, you know, you could say that such products are um, um, are banned or are not allowed to 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 be available or, or sold on the market, and and currently exactly like uh, it's it's a problem yet yeah, that there's no uh, a credible system of uh, emission um, monitoring even so just before we talked there was a delay and I started to to read the news, and I I I've read uh, that supposedly um, the, the the football uh, championship uh, that is now in in Qatar. But supposedly um, it should be um, carbon neutral. You know, I, I cannot believe it. Um, and, and for sure, some uh, accounting tricks are, are used, uh, and and um, I don't know. There's some way of, of calculating this, but there's no way currently to to prove it, yeah, or, or disprove it, and and show uh, well this is not true. You know, this is not uh, carbon neutral. And and such a monitoring uh, emission monitoring. Um, 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 yeah, information like system or mon or or uh, like a, a system that would allow you know to 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 um, to um, compare um, emissions like of due to you no know, different products, but also your yeah, services and events that does not uh, exist at the moment. Yes, yeah? so um, and it's, it's a big uh, gap. Yeah, and it's also currently like many companies not not only. Uh, Qatar, but also like many companies. I know you have noticed that probably yes, like in uh, like many companies uh, argue that they have some program for uh, I don't know sustainable investments or um, that their products are low emissions or, or uh, emissions neutral, and there is currently uh, yeah no way to 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 really prove it. So so kind of there's a lot of greenwashing um, happening but it's already no but you you have to appreciate that that or you notice that uh, um that um people start to pay attention to such issues yeah, and it's becoming uh, um some you know, motivation for for companies to um, develop such product product but of course no we need like credible system there um okay and and this is um the same um uh, information, but kind of rearranged on the level of, um, of on, on different levels of social structure. So from um, very slowly ch changing system of systems of customs, norm, religion, mm -hmm. to policies and regulations, infrastructure, technology governance, and then finally resource allocation market exchange. Yeah. So at this uh, bottom level, or resource allocation market exchange. The changes are, are very rapid, yes. Yeah? So, like uh, tipping um, in financial market could occur uh, in financial markets could occur within days, uh, or sometimes maybe even hours. But the problem is that the system can also flip back very, very, very rapidly. Yes. Yeah? So you might achieve some change, but like 
shortly after you the kind of you know the system stabilizes and and kind of flips back so you can think about the financial crisis in 2008 yeah like uh really you know some some change happened but there was like a massive effort of uh, um of uh like different um national governments uh to kind of restabilize the system and and kind of bring back the, the status quo um and uh, exactly so to um prevent this kind of like flipping back like you need uh, um changes in governance technology uh, infrastructure is extremely, extremely important like you just have to build a different infrastructure you have to also change policies um and regulations um and at the end uh, yeah normative changes are uh, extremely important yeah they take more time so at the level of social norms, you need about one generation or, or more sometimes to change social norms. And think about like norms about uh, social norms such as, uh, um, for, for instance, like uh, women rights or um, gay or, or, or lesbian rights, yeah? They took about um, 30 years uh, to, 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 to really um, you know, establish and be commonly accepted. Um, so so we, we, you can think that also in the area of, um, of um, um, yeah, of climate change, like you need those, those slower um, um, or, or it takes longer, you know, to 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 establish those those new uh, social norms. Um, but there's also some hope, you know, like we uh, so so it's not like um, the year zero of the global um, the carbonization. So those changes have already started. So we might be um, kind of in the middle, or maybe like. Uh, at the edge, at the edge of those thirty years, so 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 so, uh, you notice that especially young people, they have like a completely different system of social norms, um, and um, they consciously um, make different decisions. Um, so um, there is some um, some hope there. Yes, yeah? so I'm not necessarily saying that you know we need from now on thirty years to to tip uh, the system of, so of social norms. Yeah, I think this is already happening. Um, Exactly. So um, again, those kind of um, very slow or, or kind of like those slower system changes are, are, are needed to kind of stabilize this new emerging system. Because if you take care only, you know, if you look only at this level of market exchange or source allocation, like the system might um, kind of uh, flip back or you might observe so-called like the rebound effect, yeah, that you achieve some change, but then it kind of, you know, uh, flips back and you kind of get to the business as usual again. Um, okay, and, and maybe you no, know, like uh, once you 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 get to a system where you you like uh, most of people uh, start to feel feel bad about using fossil fuels, then you can say like you no, know, we we achieved a, like a, we we are living in a new system. Yeah, that that it's really fundamentally different from the previous system. Like just to give you an example, like you think about uh, the slavery abolition movement. Yeah, maybe it's it's similar. Um, that um, um, you know that um, currently, like even um, if it was possible, like most of us, like would not like to, uh, like you think about slavery, like this possibility to having like a, a slave, you know, um, at home hel helping you with some work. It's just like kind of for us. Uh, I mean, for most of people, in in at least um, our um, um, culture. Um, or or our region is is just kind of like um, yeah it's out of the mind yeah um, and you would prefer to do everything else than you know to 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 um, than to use uh, slave uh, labor yeah and and maybe you know if you think about that if one day we will uh, be in a system where where you know feel morally bad about um, using fossil fuels yeah that you know okay it's it's causing human suffering. And people are dying because of uh, um, the use of fossil fuel. Then you can say, um, "Yeah, it's uh, like we are living in a new system." Yeah, because it's kind of uh, uh, it's 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 morally um, bad to 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 do this. Um, and actually, this is also it's interesting that it's happening. So, uh, or, um, for instance, there is uh, in Holland there's organization social tipping uh, social tipping point coalition that um, um that uh, tries to uh, introduce bans uh, on advertisement of fossil fuel products and actually they are successful 
So, so they have managed to push a, a ban on advertising uh, cheap airlines in, in Amsterdam. And now they try to uh, introduce such bans also at the um, state level in Holland. Yeah, because like once you recognize that some pro product that's, uh, has those kind of negative moral implications, or also negative health uh, implications, like you can, like it's open, opens up the space like for, for bans, yeah, or even like uh, advertisement bans, but also like um, bans on, on using or producing or selling certain uh, products. Yeah, and it's actually also uh, happening right now, also like in the, in the car industry, for instance, there is a commitment uh, um, or already like a, a political decision. Yeah, that I think by, uh, um, um, or starting um, in 2035 or so, only uh, um, 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 or, or no combustion engine cars can be sold on, on European um, markets. Yes, yeah, so only um, electric cars or hydrogen or, or some other types of cars using uh, renewable energy will be able to, um, uh, will be allowed you know, to be sold on, 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 on the market in Europe. So, so it's interesting that those changes are, are actually happening uh, already. Yeah. So, so we might be on, on the way, uh, or in the middle of, of uh, like a global social tipping, hopefully. Um, and what is also interesting that those feedbacks from 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 the climate system. Yeah. So uh, we influence the, the global emissions and change, changes in the uh, climate uh, system uh, through emissions and the land use, but uh, also. And the climate system, like, uh, uh, um, is um, influencing um, our social systems, yeah. And uh, think of um, climate uh, extremes and and climate disasters. Um, so, so there's uh, there is some research that points out that uh, disasters like climate, but not only climate, um, can um, kind of um, open up so-called windows of opportunities. So these are like moments where uh, where people are are shocked uh, uh, and surprised, kind of out of normal, and and then they are open uh, for radical policy shifts. Here, like one example is the um, the massive push for um, renewables uh, after the Fukushima disaster in in Japan, um, and and um, and in Germany at that time um, there was like a big concern about the safety of uh, nuclear power plants and uh, uh, and there was this commitment to uh, that time to um, to phase out uh, nuclear energy and and support uh, uh, renewables um, and exactly and and such uh, like uh, there's evidence that um, that uh, climate um, disasters but also um, changes in the seasonal temperature can be used to uh, um, to, to, to push for um, rapid policy uh, shifts. Okay, and um, of course, there are also some uh, uh, feedbacks and relationships. So it's, it's a social system, so, so things are interconnected. And in the literature, you also find, you can find this, this uh, evidence of uh, positive feedbacks between different actions. Yes, so, so there's a hope that, uh, um, that kind of once you know we, we push those changes, like the system will be um, sort of like um, um, yeah, self uh, 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 propelling kind of and then push and 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 maybe some changes could be also uh, um, quicker than than expected. Um, and maybe like one more point is that. Um, 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 of course, no. It's like a list of of, of candidates or a list of of uh, uh, proposals uh, brought by the experts that took part in this research. But it's not like a complete list, pro probably, and it's also open for for critique. Um, so, for instance, like one area that is not here but is important is um, the health system. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we were not you know, fully aware of this um, that time. But um, but it seems like currently there's a lot going on in the area of health uh, or climate change impacts on human health, and also the health community is, is quite active. And um, interestingly, like many of uh, the changes we are talking here about, they have positive uh, health co-benefits. Yes, so there is uh, 
a chance that uh, uh, potentially like the health, like human health area, it, it's also like a, um, a domain where um, where a rapid change could be achieved, and uh, and and those arguments you know, of protecting human life, human health, could be used to uh, to to push for for a more ambitious uh, climate policy. Um, Okay, um, and, and in one more uh, issue that's very important uh, to talk about also uh, the carbon inequalities. So um, currently, uh, like um, a very small percent of the global populations, about 1% of the uh, world uh, top population, um, is responsible, if, responsible for this uh, disproportionately high share of emissions, yeah, or like uh, here in total, like... Um, 10% of um, top emitters are responsible for more than 30% of historic CO2 emissions. And if you look at the um, here at the bottom on this figure, um, about 50% of the uh, kind of um, poorest uh, world population is responsible only for about 4% of, uh, um, of historic CO2 emissions. Um, and I think those carbon inequalities have to be um, addressed um, as well. Um, and it's in terms of the emissions uh, and how to allocate the remaining 40% uh, percent of, of the global carbon budget to, you know, to stay uh, uh, within the Paris um, climate agreement. Um, and of course, you now we still have uh, people uh, in, uh, on, on Earth that are suffering hunger, for instance, yeah? and this is not acceptable. And uh, uh, we have uh, just publish a, a new research that shows that exactly that carbon goals can, uh, car or um, climate policy goals cannot be achieved without um, um, uh, reducing the emissions of the top emitters yes so so they have to actively contribute because if you just uh, you know increase the emissions of the poorest and don't change uh, you know anything on the top like uh, of course you know this will be out of the um, like an um, feasible carbon budget yeah so uh, those questions of social uh, justice and uh, inequalities have to be addressed. And at the same time, also climate change impacts, yeah, they um, impact uh, more um, you know, vulnerable people. So, so mostly um, the poor or, or living in remote areas or also people uh, working outside in agriculture or, or construction. So um, uh, exactly those uh, carbon inequalities have to be addressed. Um, and the carbon inequalities exist also within countries. So it's not only this, this, this uh, global north, uh, global south debate, uh, but also if you look at the emissions within um, countries, uh, there are quite large differences. So this figure is uh, showing emissions in the transport section in uh, sector in Germany, like based on representative population survey data. And uh, what is here interesting, this is orange uh, curve that shows the average emissions uh, in different groups. So we have uh, like um, here, this group left with quite many people, but uh, very low average uh, emissions. And it's mostly kind of, uh, uh, yeah, poorer people. And we have uh, people here um, in this top group um, that are the uh, more wealthy or kind of like, um, upper middle class uh, citizens uh, and um, there are um, no there are, there's less of such people in, in the society and it's also like there were less of them in the in the survey but they had uh, on average um, yeah, much higher em emissions than um, all other groups so uh, those carbon inequalities exist also within societies I think it's important uh, to to talk about them um, and especially if you look at the emissions of, of very wealthy people. So in, in this figure, it's interesting that the um, extremely wealthy people, so like the, the millionaires and billionaires, uh, they are not um, um, represented in, in any um, social surveys. Yes, so there's no data about emissions. So here, like this, this top group uh, includes only kind of like um, upper social, uh, uh, upper um, uh, middle class yeah? persons, but not like uh, very wealthy persons. Um, but I have also done research about the emissions of, um, of, of very wealthy, so kind of like a millionaire uh, persons, and uh, their emissions are um, yeah, um, very large. Um, so, so here, uh, this figure shows uh, lifestyle emissions uh, of a millionaire um, household. 
um, uh, per year in terms of uh, carbon per 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 year, um, and primarily to to like very high mobility and uh, like large um, um, houses and and uh, large consumption. And just to compare, like the uh, here the Austrian average, uh, so so or, or European average, I think it's probably around like ten tons uh, per per uh, carbon per year. Um, so it's about yeah, ten tons, and here like what average about like four um, uh, or uh, five tons tons per per uh, of carbon per per year, or, or CO two per year. Um, so so like this, um, yeah, there's those. Uh, I mean, it's just kind of yeah, very striking that there are those large differences, and we have to address this, address them. And at the same time, those uh, very uh, high emitting groups they also have um, the means yet yeah, to to uh, um, to invest in new technologies, uh, and often they are also like decision makers, yeah, or owners of different companies. So, so they have like very high agency. Um, that uh, you know, could be utilized to 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 push for uh, um, for renewables. And just a short comment, you know, there are also like those examples of like very top um, uh, emitters and kind of uh, billionaires um, who who are just not uh, on the scale at all. Yes, so uh, there was a research. It's not done by me, but but um, some other colleagues. Who looked at the emissions of uh, like um, celebrity type type of persons, and for instance, on that list uh, that year, like Roman Abramovich had uh, the highest uh, uh, world emissions, and those authors are kind of like following his uh, social media yeah, and kind of trying to tr to track like uh, how many houses he has, like where he's traveling, with what kind of transportation, and so on. They managed to, uh, or, or they calculated that that his emissions are probably around uh, thirty three thousand tons uh, per year. So, so exactly, there are those large differences that need to needs to be addressed. Um, and also, like if you look, uh, um, so this is this this figure shows um, changes in the EU uh, uh, income groups emissions within uh, different income groups uh, in nineteen ninety and two thousand fifteen. And what is interesting, like over time, um, the middle class, but also uh, um, the um, um, poorer people, their emissions decline uh, over time, has declined, have declined. But if you look at the emissions of the um, of the top uh, earners, yeah, their emissions actually increased over time. Um, so, so in a way. Uh, yeah, there there has been some success uh, in 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 the emission reductions uh, in in the EU, but but it has been achieved among um, kind of less privileged people. Yeah, and the problem is how to address emissions in, in those top top groups, uh, or how how you know what kind of policies can can be used to motivate and target uh, those high emitter emitters groups. Um, and it's not only about our individual lifestyles, uh, yeah, but also if you look at the emissions. Uh, uh, that can be linked to different companies. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's similar. Yeah, that uh, there are those large inequalities, and this figure shows that um, yeah, twenty uh, companies are responsible for thirty five of global CO two emissions, and of course those companies are primarily uh, in the oil uh, and gas sector. Um, but still, yeah, at the end it's not so much, uh, not so many companies that are uh, have disproportionately high emissions. And what is even more interesting, uh, most of those companies, they belong to national states. Yeah? And national states uh, are the signatories of the uh, Paris Climate Agreement. Yeah? So, um, um, I mean, in theory, um, the national states should control or be able to control those companies. Um, yeah, but practice is um, a bit different, but still it's, it's not uh, so, so, so many companies. Um, and it brings me to the discussion on the human agency. Yes, yeah? so uh, in most of uh, kind of social theories, uh, uh, we we know from economics, uh, management studies, or sociology, uh, like we talk about our everyday and individual agency. So the agency that we have um, through our consumer choices. Yes, yeah? so we tend to see people as consumers, yeah, kind of individual consumers, kind of everyday. They take some decisions and uh, allocate their. Uh, um yeah they their uh, funds 
and it's it's important, uh, but it's not everything here. Yeah? So there are other dimensions of human agency. Uh, um, so we can talk also about collective agency. So the agency that we have as groups, um, uh, like uh, maybe you no know, individually we are uh, uh, disempowered, but if you, you know form groups, uh, then you, you you might have a very high agency. And just think about like uh, school children. Yeah, like one school child. Um, has a very low agency, individual agency. But if you have a million of children uh, on the street, they have a um, um, very high agency. And we have also observed this, of course, not through Fridays for Future. Um, and, and one more aspect of, of human agency is the strategic and political agency. Yeah, so if you if you ask as a consumer, you cannot change that the system rules. Yeah, you... Um, uh, you you just kind of you know you take every day your consumption decisions, but you you cannot change the system within your operate. So to change the system, you need the strategic and political agency. So you need to behave as a citizen, yeah, and uh, you need to change the system rules. Yeah, for instance, like uh, 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 know what is uh, allowed and what is forbidden, or, or where do the subsidies uh, flow, um, or um, um, exactly like. Uh, what what kind of uh, um, activities are um, seen um, as desired or, or undesired or rewarded um, and, and not rewarded? Um, so um, yeah, that's that's the, the the kind of conclusion that that we, you need you know you need real like system change here. Yeah? So that's why the strategic and political agency and collective agency is extremely important, especially if you want to counteract the the agency of. Uh, um, of high emitters, uh, who are oftentimes also like uh, leaders in in the business and and uh, politics. Um, okay, some conclusions. Um, so uh, the next year's uh, cascading and systemic uh, risk or climate cascading is increasing will intensify. Um, we uh, we need new approaches to. Um, to um, understand those changes um, and um, also in terms of uh, um, emission reductions uh, it's uh, basically there's no kind of like a simple solution yet yeah, there's no like a simple solution that says no just do this and and, and you'll get there it means like you need uh, or, or it seems like you need those interventions at different um, levels of social structure um, and so we need kind of like a combination of, of different uh, um, um, interventions to, to know to take you to the goal. What is also interesting, um, like um, there's this technology kind of narrative that, that we will have those magic technologies that will uh, um, you know, uh, take us to, to climate neutrality. Uh, but it seems like we already have those technologies, but we just need to implement them. Yeah, that's the key. Uh, and you need those kind of broader societal changes um, that will kind of open the space to those new technologies. Um, but technology alone will not uh, lead to the, 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 the transformation. Yeah? Uh, we need systems uh, of uh, or, or changes in values and norms. Um, they are slower, but yeah, they stabilize this newly emerging system. Um, and there was this multiple evidence that those small um, committed minorities, depending on the type of uh, subsystem and like depending on the type of network, like it's uh, uh, some authors talk about even like, a, 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 I know, three and a half percent, some uh, like in financial net networks, uh, financial systems, I mentioned like about 9%. In the system of social norms, you need about 25% of uh, minorities, uh, uh, but still uh, it's there is this evidence that small kind of uh, um, organized and motivated groups, they can change the or tip the majority. Um, and at the end, exactly like we are, um, each of us can be in this critical minority. Yeah? So we uh, need uh, energy producers, energy ministers, of us, so teachers, educators, uh, medical uh, doctors, and uh, yeah, citizen groups to 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 know to use those different uh, levels of uh, or aspects of human agency um, to. Uh, push uh, for those changes. Uh, yeah, here's a, an example of a poster that I meant, that I made for, for one of uh, climate uh, demonstrations. Um, thanks a lot. And I hope uh, you have some questions and we can discuss uh, a bit. Thank you very much.